right, we're still tracking shares of jeweler Signet after a stunning 20% pop on Tuesday following better than expected earnings. The company struck an upbeat tone for the holidays on its earnings call, citing strength in website visits. Joining us now is Signet jeweler CEO Gina Drosas. Gina, good to see you in our studio for a change. Thanks for I coming know. down. Appreciate it's it. It's great to be here. Let's start on those website visits because we are smack in the middle, middle of the, the holiday shopping season. What are you seeing people browse for and what does the demand environment feel like to you? You know, it's really interesting. One of uh, our strategies has been to lead digital commerce in the jewelry category. It's a category that traditionally was very brick and mortar based. People only went into a store so they could be consulted or, you know, try on the product. Now we're actually selling a lot of jewelry online, but mostly browsing. 67% of our customers go online before they come into store. That's interesting. And particularly for the environments that, that we had found being beneficial for Signet is the number of people that had to unfortunately put off some of the, uh, the matrimonial celebrations or the weddings. Um, we saw a great year, of course, here in, in 2022, but that's expected to tick down in 2023 as some of that demand starts to, uh, starts to dissipate a little bit. What does that look like for your business? You know, it's, it's very interesting. Bridal is a great business to be in. I mean, every year there are engagements, weddings, anniversaries. The first meaningful blip in decades happened because of COVID. So fewer people got uh, engaged, many fewer people got married during COVID because they wanted to be able to have a celebration with friends and family. This 2022 is the year of the wedding, but we've seen engagements tick down a bit versus last year's peak, probably down a little bit next year too. What we've done is pivot more to fashion jewelry. Uh, romantic gifting has been very big coming out of COVID. People really wanting to celebrate those they love the most. Um, and Jenna, some of the other changes that you highlighted in um, in the earnings and in the conference call has to do with the price points at which people are buying right now. And it sounds like the lower end is maybe waning a little bit as we're seeing consumer trends change. Can you give us a little bit more detail on where on the spectrum we're seeing the buying? Sure. Uh, last year was a big year for lower price jewelry. Uh, stimulus was in the market. People really, you know, spending on themselves, which was great to see. Uh, Self-purchase tends to be a lower price purchase than bridal or romantic gifting. So we saw, you know, big increase last year. That's been offset this year uh, somewhat. We're still up on a stack basis, mm -hmm. but we've seen lower income customers be more challenged. Um, you know, discretionary, um, you know, price increases are impacting their discretionary spend more so than higher income customers. Uh, are we seeing even engagement in the higher end jewelry? Are we seeing buyers make different decisions at all? Are they bringing down what they're willing to spend at all? No, we've seen a lot of strength at the higher end. Uh, our average transaction value was up 8% in the quarter, up 27% versus three years ago. Uh, that is um, in, in part because of the pivot that we've made, recognizing that lower income customers would be more challenged. For that customer, we've added value engineered product really to give them a great value financing alternatives, but we've also pivoted our marketing and our assortment to attract a higher end customer. Within all the categories you sell at a, at a K or a Jarrett, what is growing the fastest? Necklaces, rings, bracelets, what, what stands out to you? You know, uh, diamond uh, tennis necklaces are really big this holiday season. Yellow gold continues to trend. Diamonds set in yellow gold for bracelets and for rings have been great, but probably one of the most interesting trends is men's jewelry. Uh, men's is really trending, black diamonds. Black diamonds. Yes. And is it okay for me to stack my necklaces? I went over to the uh, the Jared site and there's a promotion on the top of the site. I see, I see a guy with, with I think three necklaces on. I only have yeah. one. I only have one, Jenna. This, this is popular. So absolutely. Okay. Women have been layering necklaces for a couple of years now, but this year is the year that- So what you're saying is really I'm, I'm off trend. Well. I'm off trend. You can do whatever you want. But I want to. I, want to, you know, I wouldn't mind helping the margins out as Signet if I look cool. It's all good. <laughs> um, I, also, I also want to ask you about Blue Nile and the integration yeah. there, because I know analysts have a lot of questions about the profitability trajectory right. for Blue Nile. What can you tell us? So Blue Nile is losing money at this point. Uh, it lost money in the third quarter. We anticipated that and we more than offset that loss uh, with an overperformance on our core business, uh, which was nice to see. We anticipate it will lose money again in the third, I mean, in the fourth quarter. And we've said that it should be accretive to our business by the third quarter of next year. I used to follow Blue Nile a lot. Why does it lose money? It doesn't, it doesn't carry inventory, right? 
You know, what we're really looking at right now is the appropriate balance of their uh, inventory and assortment so that we can really get the right, you know, margin structure, a good, better, best structure uh, into Blue Nile and the marketing spend. And you still like There's a lot of efficiency. The, the store, are the stores still useful to have? The uh, Blue Nile has about 23 showroom stores, uh, so you don't really buy product in the stores. You go and a consultant helps you choose something that we then custom make for you um, and send it to you, uh, or you can pick it up in the store. Um, it's very effective. In the event of a mild recession, as we've heard from some bank CEOs, economists, what would that signal for the jewelry industry? What do you forecast or even model to some of your own business outlook as well? You know, jewelry is not immune to macroeconomic pressure, but I would say it's very different from most of the rest of retail. Uh, jewelry inherently holds its value, and customers know that. So they know that if they buy a nice piece of jewelry, it will be worth at least the same, if not have appreciated a year later. So we see in, in, uh, in tough times, even including recession, jewelry actually does much better than the rest of retail. Signet Jewelers. CEO, Gina Drosos, joining us here on set. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you.